there in the realms of the living, welcome to Thrones of Game, the Game of Thrones podcast that watches Game of Thrones backwards. Now, if you've never heard the show before, let me quickly explain for you there, friends. My name is BT Calloway. I've already seen the entire show. Joining me is Elliot J. O'Neill, who is watching the show for the first time ever in reverse order. Elliot, how are you? I bring you a gift. A gift, you're saying? My opinions. Mm, oh, what a lovely gift that is. Yes, we just watched Season 5, Episode 7, The Gift. Elliot, what just happened? Oh, man, there was such a great big... <laughs> A lot of moving pieces in this one, yeah. Yeah, look, I mean, good for the bit, but, like, honestly, uh, yeah, this episode was mostly a snooze fest until, like, the last three segments, which mm. I thought were all pretty engaging, but, yeah, for the most part, man, I was sleepy. Oh, well, on the opening bit with Sansa and Reek and, <sighs> and uh, freaking <laughs> Crazy McPants, forgot his name again. Flash Gordon Ramsey Bolton? Yeah, <laughs> Flash Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this is the one where uh, Cersei gets trapped into the Sept, where um, Sansa's first attempts at escape are thwarted because of Reek's weakness, where, uh, I don't know, some other stuff happens. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Ellie, what was your MVP? Your uh, most valuable part of this episode? Oh, um, something from the last three segments. Let me pick one at random, because they were all pretty fucking good. They're pretty tasty. All right, uh, MVP was the Sand Viper women yeah. um, teasing Braun. Was that Braun? Yeah, or Bron, <laughs> Bran, Bron. No, Bron. I'm pretty sure it's Bron. I Bron. need to, I need to look it up, but I have to. I can't open my web browser right now for a segment that's coming slightly later. All right, all <laughs> Bron. Right. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, Br- Bron, not Bran. Possibly Bron. Yeah. Uh, so th- there were a few like surprise uh, laughs for me in this episode, actually, yeah. and this was one of them where she's slowly taking off her clothes and then he starts to feel woozy and I'm like, has she got a poison pussy? What the <laughs> fuck is going on? The nipples are poisonous. <laughs> well, like, because he starts feeling woozy the second she like uh, uh, reveals mm-hmm. her map of Tasmania, so yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what um, is shooting out of Hobart right now? I mean, <laughs> some... Part about sand vipers there. I don't know <laughs> something about snakes. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, brawn is girt by poisoned. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, just remember if it uh, if it fuck. No, nope, I've lost it. Hang on. Well, it's very simple. If she poisons you, it's venomous. But if you eat her and you get poisoned, she's poisonous. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Not even that good of a bit for all the amount of time it took me to think of it. I was like, "There's something that not nah, fucking it's garbage. Get rid of it." Ah. <laughs> And I, I hit that fucking thing! How are you, my nemesis? Uh, just quickly, if we keep that in for listeners, there's a my, my, there's a music stand in here that I've hit so many times, I've lost count. And it's just, it's... You don't expect your enemies to be inanimate objects, and yet... Oh, dude. The amount of things that I stub my toe on regularly, like, just stubbing my toe in general is, like, such a frequent event, and I'm a diabetic, so I'm like, Mm -hmm. when I eventually lose a toe, it's gonna fucking happen because of how much I do this, and I will deserve it. (laughs) And a bit the doctor will ask you what happened. You'll say, well, I stubbed it really hard on something stupid. Yes. It was a roller skate. I didn't even roller skate. I didn't know what (laughs) I was doing then, yet that's what it did. Mm. Such is life. Uh, so yeah, no, that was a great little bit when she's all like, uh, you know, Braun's just sitting there. And I do love, first of all, pretty good singing voice from old Braun. Damn, like the fucking unexpected singing in this show. Yeah. Like, I mean, we expected it when Ed Sheeran was on screen. I mm. mean, duh, he sucks, but he's got a good voice. But mm. yeah, the pipes of Podrick and yep. the... Uh, um, the bellows of Braun. Hey, there we go. Mm. Yeah, no, I'm pretty sure he used to be like in an 80s synth band or something. I'm sure I've seen <laughs> oh, that shit. in, like, you know, one of those things that's like, oh, what were the Game of Thrones stars before they were the Game of Thrones stars? Yeah, something like that. I'm sure of it. Huh. And yeah, off cross from him are the Sand Vipers all in, the, uh, all in a cell together. And I do like... Like, uh, Bron just giving them a little bit of sass because he's all like, oh, I don't mind staying around Dawn. Dornish women are the most beautiful in the world. And she's like, oh, well, thank you very much. Like, oh, I said Dornish women. I didn't say you. Oh. <laughs> oh, burn. Yeah. Um, and even though, you know, uh, convenient feeling effects of poison is very convenient moment. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, I did like how this scene played out and it's great back and well, forth. Well, let's not be too hasty here because you did suggest the second, you know, she, she un- sheathed herself entirely is when he got woozy and later on she also she does refer to herself as being bad pussy 
So oh. maybe it is she does somehow inject him with the power of her vagina. I don't know. Or maybe like because she knew about you know, the the stuff on her blade, which she obviously yeah. stabs him in an episode I haven't seen yet. Yep. And so At shadowing. Maybe she uh, knows how you know blood works. Yeah. In like delivering the poison a bit more quickly. Yep. And if some rushing to other extremities, maybe mm. taken away from others, allowing the poison to take effect. I mean, that's the sensible answer. Do we do we come here to be sensible? <laughs> no, because this was also a bit of nudity. I know. Just to skip ahead to question four, it's really our only bit of nudity. Sorry, four is violence. What am I doing? Jesus. Number three, nudity. Oh my god, like. You know, I don't want to be a chauvinistic male and be all male gazy and mm-hmm. toxic and whatever. But holy fuck, what a perfect pair of tits. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not going to lie. Super good. Real nice. <laughs> like Way <it>, to cast. <laughs> <laughs> like, the sculptors of yore would not be able to model something this wonderful. <laughs> Concur. Very, very statuesque. Yeah. Yeah. No, seriously, it's um, th- they should be displayed. <laughs> <laughs> and proudly, which she does. So good for you, actress lady. Yeah. You know, and I do like the kind of contrast between all the sand vipers. The other two are all like scowly and mean. And I like the one, that one with the short hair, who's like just a little bit nicer, but not maybe not nicer, but a little more uh, softer edged, I suppose. I don't know. I don't know what you want to call it, but is you know because they're also the ones playing the slap game, and she's the one who's losing. Yeah. And it's just like I'll get you eventually, and then does, and then just smacks her across the face. She's definitely the Dewey of that trio. Yeah, but I'm I'm on board with that. It's good to have contrast because the other two kind of fade in the background because they're just pretty much the same anger angry person. Mm. Yeah. Also, we don't see their boobs. So, yeah. you know. <laughs> Doesn't make them any less important. Doesn't make them any less important. But it However, does make her more, more distinct. <laughs> everyone's more important when they're topless. Just put that on something. I don't know. I can't. I'm, I've had a weird day and I can't brain properly. Anyway, friggin' hell. I'll move on to my MVP, which is uh, just a couple of little lines where, um, you know, what is it? Uh, it's Dan Brady talking to that guy in bed who I can't remember his name. The guy. Oh yeah, and they've got the convenient L-shaped blanket yeah. going on, the Hollywood L-shaped even, blanket. Even in Westeros or Essos is where they are now, yeah. they still have L-shaped blankets. It's weird. It's uh. Well, I mean, it's great for, you know, when you don't want to see the uh, female nipple, but you do want to see the male one. I know, but it's like, we've seen it. It's been <laughs> featured before. Why are we suddenly coy? Yeah, well, I mean, they with Dan, it's coy. usually done in the context of, you know, her balance power of struggles. power. Yeah, yeah. And I noticed here, you know, even though she wasn't... um in a position of not having power, the braids were still out, you know? Mm-hmm. So they come out when she wants to have a bit of fun, I guess? Yeah, when she's not ruling. When she's yeah. not, you know, the queen of with 700 names. <laughs> and when she's just Dan Brady, surprisingly she doesn't have the... When, no, when she's not Dan Brady, when she's just Danny. Yeah. She, the hair's out and flowing and silvery. Because, yeah, I did notice in the scene later when she was reluctantly at the fi- fighting pits, you know, mm-hmm. she had a few braids in, not too many. Yep. So, like, uh, maybe it's... Um, well, that uh, was like the royals slumming it a bit, you know? Yeah. So, you know, going to the average people's fighting pits, not the grand fighting pits. Right, she didn't need the grand braids. Yeah, the grand braids of Dan Brady. <laughs> yeah. But uh, in this little se- scene, she's all, he's all like, you know what you need to do is get all the old masters together at the great games and slaughter them all. And mm. she's all like, I don't want to be, I want to be a queen, not a butcher. And he's all like, all rulers are either butchers or meat. <laughs> And I'll come back to that in a second, but also there's a little bit between uh, Sass Queen and the High Sparrow, and uh, it's real, just a little good bit from High Sparrow, who's all like, you know, Sass Queen's all like, oh, you just, you're just doing Cersei's dirty work, and he's just like, the people always do the dirty work. It's like, yeah, yeah fair. It's a uh, go sort of bird, medieval Bernie Sanders. <laughs> well, uh, uh, the, um, oh, fuck, I forgot. Never mind. Man, I'm having a weird day now, too. Ah, it's infectious. <laughs> fuck. Even in an episode that was way too full of talking for my liking, I did enjoy this, you know, classic uh, ruling class that works for money and power versus the um, one that works for the gods and Mm -hmm. man of the people or whatever. Yep, very good. But quickly back to Dan Brady's pillow talk. She sucks at pillow talk. <laughs> like, what's his face is trying to get all, you know, get it on again. And she's all like talking about slaves and diplomacy and freedoms. And it's like... Mm -hmm. Oh my god, you just you killed it. You killed the mood. He's trying to get you know, start talking about marriage and she's mm-hmm. all like, nah dude. Yeah. He's like, you know, you could marry me. And she's like, oh, I don't think so. I've married for diplomacy. Oh, <laughs> He's like, oh wow, mood killer. Yeah. 
Yeah. I couldn't help but notice in this scene as well, like, there is so many strategic shots to avoid her nipples. Mm. Like, I can't imagine how much repositioning there would have been done. And it's like, can you see them? Can you see them? You better not be able to see them. Yeah. Like, because, yeah, there's the arm in the way and there's the blanket, which stopped being conveniently over her when yeah. uh, he was on top and his arm was in, the, like, yeah. I yeah. think there was actually some pretty bad staging, to be honest, in this. Maybe she's, like, contractually obligated to only have so many nipple glances per season. And they're like, no, nah, we got to save it for later. No, well, you got to keep them special, man. Yeah, it's true. It's, yeah. You know, because, um, yeah, if they're just there for, you know, just because they're there, then it becomes not so much special when she's using them in positions of power. But surely that portrays, like, comfort. And, you know, comfort is arguably power, because power is to get what you want, and if you want is to be comfortable. Ah, but she clearly uh, lacks certain comfort That's with this true. guy. Because he's all like, oh, why don't we be more than just bone buddies? And she's mm. all like, how about not? Yeah. <laughs> fair call, fair call. She's keeping some things at bay. Okay, I'm back on on symbolism. <laughs> there we go, that's why. He was all like, it's very weird, we're sleeping together, yet I still can't see her nipples. Every time I look down, <laughs> somehow it's shifted. How did you do that? <laughs> Where did that black bar come Just, from? What the? I'm so confused. Witchcraft! <laughs> ah! <laughs> yes. Oh, man, that pretty much does me for nudity, I believe. Oh, yeah, wait, no, we have to talk about, um... <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think you already know, that's why you're laughing. <laughs> Sam from another series even has sex like he's from another series. <laughs> what the fuck, man? <laughs> oh, talk about, like, weird fucking staging of clothing. When did he get his pants off? Uh, it's ye olde pants. They they fasten, fasten together differently. Oh. <laughs> yeah. This is one of the fucking weirdest sex scenes ever. <laughs> no, but I like that it's the weird because it is meant to be so different because it's Sam. But even then, it's just... He literally just goes... Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I was halfway writing the note, are we going to hear Sam Y's sex noise? And I got as far as writing, are we going to hear Sam? And then he just says, oh my. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, jolly good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, I don't want to really make a Family Guy reference, but it reminded me of British porn. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> almost, almost. There we are. <laughs> well done. <laughs> oh, man. This was so funny. <laughs> I know. I did laugh my ass off on this. So, okay, just for the whole whole scene before we get to that part you know some some you know thugs have cornered uh gilly and are all like hey, how about a little kiss love mm. and then sam comes in to defend her but being sam he sucks at it but hey to his credit he gets back up and then we... <laughs> um what well fuck what's the captain america line I could do this all day. There we go. That is America's ass. <laughs> that is Sam Weiss's <laughs> ass. <laughs> uh, yeah, but he gets uh, he gets beaten pretty badly, but yeah. uh, gets back up, and then we get about a ghost ex machina where the direwolf yeah. ghost rocks up, and they're like, yep, 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 yep. <laughs> yes, yep. you would. Again, same page, deus ex wolf. <laughs> yep. But uh, yeah, so that leads us to, you know, Gilly then showing some affection for Sam, and Oh my! <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> uh, like you see this often when they're trying to do like PGM sort mm. of sex scenes. Yeah, um, uh, for international lists of which there's a few PG or M. Or These PG are like, thirteen. Or yeah, whatever. M is like the mm, fifteen year rank, but you mm. don't have to have parents with you to go see it. Yeah. Um. So, like, yeah, both of these sort of skirting the border of sex. So, anytime you sort of see these, like, still-clothed sex scenes, it's mm -hmm. like, oh, well, that's not going to work. Yep. Um, but... <laughs> well, it's a world without really underwear, and... Uh, yeah, yeah, okay, I'll pay that. No zippers, so all you have to do is undo someone's belt, and you're pretty much there. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> but, yeah, he did go from fully panted to bottoms off and i just wonder if this was in well, his contract as these well. were what to say oh my during a sex scene <laughs> oh no no Look, that he wasn't going to do full frontal you and... have to remember man these were different times these were dangerous times you never know when death was going to come so you had to be on the job as soon as possible yes yeah, so if all it took was a quick tug of the belt and you were ready to go that's what you did Actually, that's a good point, because then, you know, that explains Dan Brady as well being in a higher position of power, less to mm -hmm. worry about, happy to, yeah, declothe. Yeah, okay, I'll yeah. pay that. Okay, see? When you when you have time and power, you can spend all this romantic time dressing up and having your hair done and getting L-shaped blankets. Prisoners, you know, they've got <coughs> nothing to lose, so yeah, they're taking yeah, yeah. their time getting but, their boobies out. But when you're just, you know, scum of the earth, yeah. it's just, gotta get it done. Yeah. When you're not in prison or in power. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird that those are the extremes, yet they burn the same. But hey, <laughs> whatever. Yep. Oh, man. So that does wrap up nudity nicely. Or no, almost not nudity. Uh, violence? 
Lots, actually. Plenty of this. Um, so, yeah, of course, Samwise getting beaten up, which mm-hmm. actually, yeah, the fucking the headshots in that were really yeah. brutal. I do, when a Game of Thrones, like, focuses in on a certain type of violence, mm-hmm. like, this is what I really love about the art of shooting it like you know because that was just so brutal and it Mm. felt like a real fucking situation like that guy just repeatedly going for the head to keep this fucking uh fat asshole cock blocker out of the way Mm. yeah i do even actually quite like sam's line later when gilly's like you should have left it alone he's like i will not don't don't worry they were tiring out yeah (laughs) (laughs) they were getting exhausted from beating my face (laughs) yeah (laughs) he was really hoping for yeah the homer simpson versus dredrick tatum (laughs) when the (laughs) yep but uh that's it's a good little bit um yeah so other than that we've got let's see Oh, we get a bit of Jorah and Tyrion in the fighting pits, and I do like that in order to prove his worth, uh, Tyrion's all like, no, When once Jorah gets bought, Tyrion's all like, oh, no, I have, you have to take me, we're a pair, I'm a great fighter as well, and he, everyone laughs at him, so he just kind of, the kid who's got his chain, he just pulls him over and starts whipping him with the chain. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's so good. And then the, he goes to buy him, mm-hmm. and he goes, you're right, he is funny. <laughs> like, he's not even, he's still not convinced he's a fighter. That yeah. is awesome. Yep, and that one sleep is like, oh, I got my ass kicked in the air. <laughs> He's a good fighter. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. everyone will be making fun of him for ah. the pub later. It's, Shut up. Oh. It wasn't like, he was really tough, okay? Yeah, don't worry. You, you say he was a dwarf. He was big for a dwarf. No. <laughs> yeah, that'll be a thing, and that's fun. Um, but yeah, then we get some bit more fighting pits later on. Then there's some, you know, usual fighty pits, stabby, stabby, neck slashy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> again, th- there were some choice sort of violent cuts in this. Uh, mm-hmm. The one where it was like you're getting the perspective of the blunt force trauma from mm-hmm. the victim and you just see the blood splatter up towards the yeah. camera. Like, yeah, there's some interesting blood splatter use in this show. It's going to be a thing. When you when violence is like your bread and butter, how do you keep it interesting? And I yeah. think I think they typically do find ways to make it feel visceral or realistic. Like there's one where they get a shot of a guy who gets shanked in the neck. You get a bit of terror face from him dying. It's like... Yeah, and then yeah. like he fucking bleeds out like a stuck pig as mm, well. Yeah, like, it's nasty. And it, I mean, and it's not just about seeing the blood or the stabbing or whatever. Like, and it, it is, I think, about doing it artistically. And, yeah. Like, and, yeah. Otherwise it would be boring. Like, yeah, and showing the terror and like the fear and like at ground level as well. So I think this is the difference between this scene and the um, the White Walker scene from last mm. time. Yeah, where, where it felt non impactful and it was like they were almost fighting green screen. Yeah, well, it also felt so like theater fighting as well, mm. you know, uh, stabbing the arm, you know, between <laughs> oh, the arm and the shoulder. I've been stabbed. Yeah, arm and the rib cage rather. Yeah, not, yeah. yeah. No, I know what you mean. Yeah, it's a lot more stage, whereas this felt a lot more visceral and real, so whoever's doing that unit, much better than the Winterfell unit. Yeah, gotta get their recipe for fake blood as well. Mm-hmm. Hoping it's not just real blood. <laughs> <laughs> it's cheaper to kill the actors. <laughs> <laughs> Quite frankly, in this day and age, special <laughs> effects cost like crazy. Extras, per whatever. <laughs> Red food dye? Jesus Christ, what are we made of? Corn syrup? No way. <laughs> I was about to say, like, maybe on a higher budget show, but this was Game of Thrones. There was no higher budget show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this was the higher budget show. Mm-hmm. Other bits of violence. We don't really see it. It's just the aftermath of um, Ramsay Snow having flayed uh, informant for uh, Sansa. Yeah, next time on Thrones of Game. Mm-hmm. Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> yeah. But again, he does it very well just by being super creepy and you don't really see the full body in focus. It's mm. just a foot and you're like, that doesn't look like, a- oh, right. And just his commentary of, you know, oh, they're hearty in the north. They just Usually people talk immediately when I start peeling them away, but she, her heart gave out before I even got to her head. It's like, fucking hell, you creep. <laughs> yep. Uh, Ramsey Bolton, give like if there's a Emmy for creepiest actor <laughs> in a <laughs> TV show. Right? Uh, does it so well. I love that guy. I mean, I love the actor. The the character is a monster, but <laughs> like uh, I think part of his creepiness comes because when he first sees Sansa, he gives this smile and it's a hundred percent genuine. It's not I have a horrible surprise for you smile. It's not I'm doing awful things to you smile. It's literally he's just gleeful and like, oh good. It's like Oh, that makes him so much worse. <laughs> yeah. Well, also, he's, like, objectively a handsome dude. He's got very nice skin. He's got, you know, piercing blue eyes mm. and, you know, decent haircut. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. What else do you gauge attractiveness on? I don't know. <laughs> but, yeah, so then when he does that fucking dead-eye stare and, like, yeah. wry smile, it's like, oh, chills. Yeah. Uh, super good. You creep. <laughs> so <laughs> is it still a crucifixion if it's done in that X thing, or does it have to be a T? 
Good question. I believe anything where people are hung by being nailed to something counts as a crucifixion. There we go. I believe. <laughs> Fair question. I'm not entirely certain. Right but, in, uh, cruciferbalists. <laughs> nice. Those are crossword doers. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, whatever. <laughs> Sounds right, you know. Because the whole bit with uh, Sansa and Reek starts with her, you know, it's a shot I really like because it's very understated where Reek first goes in and Sansa's just turned away at the wall and there's just bruises down her arm and that's about it and you know everything yeah. just from that. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah, it's effective creepiness. It's that kind of, you know, show don't tell kind of thing mm. um, where you get it without having to get it and then she goes on to say, you know, she, he keeps me locked up here all day and then he comes to me at night and then Ramsay's leaving words are... You know, he says, oh, you know, take the queen, the, I'm sorry, take my wife back to her chambers. And so, so there's that, you know, locked up all day. And it's like, and oh, it gives back a candle. It's like, you'll need your candles. The nights are so long. It's like, oh, mm. God, you subtextual creep as well as textual creep. Yeah. Well, anticipating Ray coming up the tower as well. Mm -hmm. Was he just doing like writing or was he eating uh, menacingly there? I think he was eating menacingly again. Like he had like a full picnic lunch. He didn't know how long it would take Reek to be up here. Yeah. So he was prepared for a much longer wait. And it was like, oh, good. Well, a <laughs> little bit early than I expected. <laughs> well, yeah, when you eat food menacingly, you have to mm. do it slow anyway. So, you know, yeah, yeah well, it is time. Exactly. But as we, uh, we've discussed before, learning how to eat menacingly is like acting 101. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's part of it. Sometimes it's a big feast. So. Yeah. Well, I guess that's the thing, you know, bring pr plenty of food and, you know, do a bunch of practice, uh, you know, ones, because you'd hear rate covering, like, I'm sure those spiral staircases echo a bit. Oh, for sure. So, you know, you'd sort of take a nibble from each one. It's like, mm. which one's going to do the job? That The big ham leg? The yeah. ham hock? <laughs> yeah, how do I eat ham menacingly? You've got some time to consider it. What's that thing where, like, uh, someone just, usually a woman, just films herself eating a bunch? Like mukbang or mug bank or something? You've not heard of this? I don't know, but I've got a new thing to look up on Pornhub for uh, purely uh, uh, I, um, academic reasons. I don't know if it's ASMR-based. I don't understand it in the slightest, but if someone out there knows what that is and is doing it, try doing it menacingly. <laughs> <laughs> Scare the fuck out of all your weird fans. <laughs> oh, man, the internet. What an eternal hellhole. <laughs> Indeed. All right, we get a bit of the old maester dying, which is uh, what the maester that uh, then Sam from another series takes on. Which I feel like was another of your accidental comedy bits when he's like, Egg, Egg, <laughs> talking about his little brother Egon Targaryen, who ended up being king. So. Yeah, I, it's just, like, I feel bad because I'm laughing at a dude that clearly has dementia, but there's something funny about that, and he's just yelling out for Egg. It's a delightful tone as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's mostly sad. But, you know, we were saying when we were watching the episode, it reminded me personally mm -hmm. of Arrested Development, and, uh, and he's like, it reminds me of Egg, and then Sam why does it go, huh? <laughs> uh, I thought you were laughing at, you know, always sunny. Can I offer you an egg at this trying time? <laughs> okay. I was backwards on my references. <laughs> um, but yeah, then that guy passes away and a uh, creepy Night's Watch dude is all leans over to Sam and goes, oh, it looks like all your friends are dying. He's like, who makes a threat during a funeral? You suck, guy. I'm glad they hung you. Yeah. Oh, and fucking Sam Wise, he can deliver a eulogy. Mm, yeah, he was very sentimental. He's like, he was always nice to me and he looked after me and all this kind of things. Yes. And he said the thing. <coughs> said the thing. Oh, yes, he said. And now his watch has ended. <laughs> and I turned, he went, ah. It's ah. roll credits. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we then cut to Stannis Baratheon and Millhouse kind of just hanging out and talking. And Stannis is all like getting a little touchy-touchy with her and she kind of oh, sto yeah. stops him and is all like, oh, you know, I know that's what you want, but what if, get this, <laughs> we burned your daughter to death. Ah, huh? <laughs> Sounds like a date? Yeah? Fun? I was just like, okay, is this a strategy for her? Is like, does she just want this situation to stop and this was the easiest way? <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, you know what? It's such a romantic dinner, but we don't have any candles. I've got it. Let's set your daughter on fire. <laughs> like, yeah, there's like, um, women knowing how to kill the mood. I don't want to get married. Let's burn your daughter. I poisoned you earlier. Come to think of it, yes. <laughs> this episode should be called Boner Killer. <laughs> the title of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> because that's what happens repeatedly. I didn't even notice until you brought it up. Well done. But yeah, three times in one episode, someone's just trying to get some warmth in the middle of this freezing cold place. They're like... And your daughter. <laughs> you know, winter is coming, and you know what else should be coming? Fire Fuck on you. your daughter. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ah, well done. I feel I feel li like elevated in terms of our critique of episodes now. <laughs> yep, we got there. Mm -hmm. 
Oh yeah, another scene with Tommen and Cersei, but I don't have a lot of notes on it. It's just, again, I feel Tommen is underrated because he is playing the weak character. Mm. Uh, and he does that very well, to his credit. So Yeah, and honestly, it's actually still very weird for me to consider Cersei a threat with long hair. I don't mm. know what it is. Well, it's so soft and luxurious. <laughs> it's for real. and But she's got some, like, Dan Brady-level braids going on. Mm-hmm. And, like... I haven't seen her, like, done up with long hair, I guess, is yeah, the thing. Yeah. yeah, you've only seen the short hair and the, her being uh, destitute. Yeah, exactly. Um, but in this as well, I got more of a sense of her character um, with, you know, she's not the kind of evil that um, will be loud and abusive towards mm. you. No, no. She's the one that's going to make you snap. Oh, yeah. As we see when she goes to see Marjorie Tyrell in, yeah. the, in the sept and is just, oh, the back and forth there is so good. And... <laughs> I don't know, when Lena Headley's like raising an eyebrow as well, it feels like it's informing the character's got, you know, the cogs turning and, you know, mm. she's got three chess moves ahead. And, yeah, and Marjorie yeah. Tyrell, she's just like, oh, we're doing everything we can for you. Marjorie Tyrell's mm. like, you fucking bitch, I know you did this. Like, oh, you poor thing, you're delirious. <laughs> so, oh, it's so good. Take your soup and shove it. <laughs> I didn't lose my cool. Ooh, ooh I hate that ooh. person that does that. <laughs> yeah, ooh, you bitch <laughs> yeah so good and then of course she walks directly into a trap where confess lady shows up <laughs> she didn't even say anything this episode i know nothing and she's still intimidating as hell <laughs> and this is the bit i was talking about before because last episode we said i don't even know what this actress looks like uh let's do like a live reveal of reactions oh, on, shit. Uh, on what this actor is so i've googled her name but i've not seen the photo yet gonna read it up now oh she's very pleasant but yes yeah, wow um also I'm trying to think Think like Sonya Blade. <laughs> I mean, like, yep. Sonya Blade. She's got some power brows. Oh, no, yeah. oh, you're in check, this episode. Check that out. Oh, she's blonde. Yeah, that's where, where I got Sonya Blade from. Can you do like a little pin suit? Oh, yeah, sorry. Kind of very pleasant, but will also clearly wow. take no bullshit. So uh, I'm I'm, bet- I'm mixed between... Because we were like, is she just a 100% stern-faced lady the entire time? Or is she nothing like that and just a really amazing actor? I think the answer is somewhere in between. That you can see that sternness kind of hidden behind a very nice smile and some some very powerful blonde hair. I think it's amazing what hair can do now that I think about yeah, it. Because not having the hair revealed... Mm. Uh, I, oh, it softens her up amazingly. Yeah. Like, I might have to post that to the socials, because the, the side-by-side is amazing. I'm going to save that, and I'll bring it up. <laughs> Ba-ba-da-ba, ba-ba-da. Oh, actually, speaking of the socials, um, uh, Max von Sydow recently passed away. Mm. Um, fans of this show know, you know, we affectionately have been calling him Tree Man. Yep. And then on our other podcast, The Simpsons Index, he was the Strupo guy. Mm-hmm. But yeah, um, besides the shows that we're familiar with him, otherwise a fucking amazing actor, and yeah... Um, but, you know, 90-something years old. Definitely yeah. had an amazing inning. So, yeah, Vale, fail. Yeah, yeah. Just to actually say this woman's name, because I've kind of missed that. Hannah Waddingham. Hmm. Very British last name. <laughs> All right, so that's my segment on Confess Lady. <laughs> Oh, and also just another timely bit of news as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Jamie Lannister got fucking cast as Joel in The Last of Us TV show. Yeah, I know. That's interesting. Yeah. So... Like... And I'd said to you, like, in a little chat feed, like, mm. I mean, that's brilliant casting. He looks the part. And I'm like, wait, he's just a fucking white dude with stubble. Yeah. He, he could be the perfect cast for, like, Nathan Drake or mm-hmm. fucking uh, any number of video game characters from the last 10 years. Quite arguably. I don't know. Nathan Drake has more of that, you know, sly kind of jokey fox guy about him. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, no, I agree. It's, it's, it's very default hero guy. But um, I think Jamie Lannister will be able to do the right right um, acting lifting for that. Well, yeah, and, you know, it's a meaty fucking dramatic role mm-hmm. and, yeah, requires a lot of pathos. Is that the word I'm looking for? Sure. I can't remember what words mean right now. <laughs> yeah, so good luck to him. Yeah, I mean, he has to live up to Troy Baker, so. Oh, yeah. Yeah, tough role. Yeah. I'm, I'm a little bit surprised they didn't just get him to do it. Yeah, he's a stubbly white guy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I don't know, maybe maybe he doesn't like doing the physical stuff. I don't know. Maybe he prefers voice acting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because sometimes, like, I don't know if you've ever seen, like, behind the scenes of voice actors, like, mm. the way they need to contort their bodies and face to do the role. Yeah. It's like, yeah, probably just doesn't translate to on camera. Yeah, maybe he has to, like, stand on one foot and cross his arms to do the voice properly and it's not going <laughs> to translate. I don't know. Or maybe he just would feel bad about not doing it without his co-star, Ashley Johnson, who mm. great voice actor but is far too old to be able to play ellie who's 14 and ashley johnson's like 30 something yeah so yeah 
I uh, know. I still think it's unusual routines in the studio that make him act like he's like the lead <laughs> singer of the Bangles and has to do it naked, um, yeah. except for foot high in a bathtub surrounded by candles. <laughs> yep, I mean, it could be. Actors, man, whew, their craziness, whatever. <laughs> As are musicians. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we get a little bit of Sass Queen with Littlefinger, but again, I don't have too much to say on that, um, other than she drops a pretty big bomb. Together we murdered a king. Mm. So, uh, you know, that's neat. Oh. But uh, also, just meet, seeing power players meet sometimes is just fun. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, I didn't really have much to gauge from this scene, uh, sort of referencing a bunch of stuff that I wasn't really aware of. And mm-hmm. But yeah, Littlefinger just doing his Littlefinger stuff of like... I work in subservient roles, but I get information. Mm, yeah, I know. Every time he shows up, I just write down little finger, little fingers. Yeah. <laughs> just, Ooh, I'm little finger. I'm doing things at getting the information. <laughs> Actually, he kind of <laughs> reminds me of the fucking the nude aliens from uh, the first Futurama movie. Oh, uh, yeah. The, what, the... um. I forget what they're ah. called, but yeah, they're just naked all the time, yeah. the st- and uh, they have sprunges, which yep. inflate when they get information. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Yep. Yeah, he is very much that, yeah. only without a sprunger. Unless we can't see it. He's always wearing that high collar for a reason. Yeah. Yeah, we're on to you, guy. <laughs> you know, to be a nude alien in disguise, all you'd have to do <laughs> is wear clothes. Pretty much. <laughs> Again, a quick bit of decent uh, scene between Jamie and Marcella where he's like, oh, I came to get you back, you're in danger. And she's like, you don't know me, and storms out. It's it's brief, but it's, you know, strong. Mm. Um, but that gets dwarfed entirely by Bronn in the cell with the Sand Vipers. And I do like um, when he's talking about, oh, she's all like, oh, am I not the most beautiful woman you've ever seen? And he's all like, oh, you know, there was this one in, woman in King's Landing. And then she starts taking off her clothes. He's like, what? She's like, what, what were you saying? He's like, well, my memory's not what it was a minute ago. <laughs> <laughs> I do like that as a line. He's got such good lines. Yeah, which is, yeah, both uh, either a flirt move or a fuck, I'm getting lightheaded move. Like, yeah, it's a yeah, little bit of both. Yeah, good writing in that scene. Mm hmm. And uh, I do also want to wanted because um, once again Jorah is in a fighting pit when he meets Daenerys again. I just wanted to be like, we have just got to stop meeting like this. This is crazy. <laughs> what? We're here again. <laughs> what? I, 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 if this happens one more time, I, I just, swear. <laughs> <sighs> Fate. What's up with it? <laughs> All right. Well, that puts you out of notes. That puts me out of notes. We must ask our final question: How do we get here? And we are looking at extending this now. And maybe including the title of the next episode. Mm. All right. So next time on Game of Thrones, season five, episode six is entitled Unbowed, Unbent, Unbroken. Unbowed, Unbent, Mm -hmm. Unbroken. Yep. It's about a really good arrow, which isn't going to be in a bow. Yeah. They're like, it's it's the super sturdy arrow, unbreakable. It won't be bent, bowed or broken. Yeah. it's It's just really straight. It's really well crafted. Fuck, who is it for, though? Mm. That, um, and... Or whoops, could it be? <laughs> no, look, I mean, the one thing that's, you know, sometimes I do forget that I'm ro- watching the show backwards, and so, like, when plot things happen, they, mm. they're sort of a little bit of a surprise to me. Like, seeing uh, Cersei uh, not in prison and in full garb and long hair that's really done up nice, I'm like, yeah. Wasn't she in prison last time? Oh, right. I'm watching the show backwards. Oh, this is the episode where this happens. Yeah, sometimes. Like, the fact that um, Sass Queen and Littlefinger meeting up was a big deal. It was like, oh, yeah, this is happening in reverse. But they've both been built up, and you know who they are anyway. And yeah. now they're kind of joining up. No, absolutely. Even though you've already seen them both die. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm going to see Jamie get to uh, Dawn. Is that mm-hmm. the place? Yep. It sounded like it, it was spelt D-O-R-N. Yep. So, yeah, going to see that happen. I think this might be... Well, yeah, Bron's going to get shanked in the arm. Mm-hmm. So maybe this is where he and the Sam Vipers go to prison because of that. Yeah. Um. And, yeah, I forgot to say as well, this episode, unlike other Game of Thrones episodes this one seemed to jump back and forth between the various settings a lot yeah we didn't like have one person's story and then finish that and go to someone else's we jump between about you know four or five different settings people within those settings and tangentially related yeah several times yeah which i think is fine because a smaller cast is you know it's a lot easier to follow just on an episode by episode basis but Mm -hmm. yeah this one like i felt the pacing was a bit um, all over the place because of it. Um, Just because the intensity of what each person is doing does yeah. not necessarily match the next scene. Yeah. But, yeah, and that's all I have to say about that. Yes. Well, I suppose next time we'll find out. Until then, that's been Elliot J. O'Neill. Goodbye. I've been BT Kellaway, and for now, our watch has ended. He said the thing. I said the thing. I said the thing.